Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part three of my tale of two things, working on my McCready uh, fighting the Norris spider head diorama. Uh, now, uh, I know I had said in the last video that I should wrap up the, um, the build in this current one, uh, and I am very close to finishing it, but um, uh, I've been working on it for a couple of weeks now, this, this last part, and it's definitely going on much longer than I expected it to be as far as the video. And also, I still have a few things to finish up on it. So I decided to split it up, and um, I'm just going to do a video, uh, this video, on completing McCready, getting him put together and painted, and uh, painting the spider head, and also working on a nameplate um, that uh, Mark Fraley designed for me and I 3D printed and, uh, and put some lights in it. So that's gonna be cool as well. So thanks again, Mark. Uh, he's designed several other nameplates for me and he's becoming really quite proficient at making 3D files. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the progress uh, that I have on this build. All right, so I've begun painting the spider head, and um, I tried to look at some screenshots. It's hard to get a real clear look at it because it's not in frame very very long, but generally the whole thing seems to be kind of a flesh color with some different darker colors in it. So what I did was I started off by using some uh, just some flat flesh over the whole thing, and then I went back over with some uh, Model Masters Dark Tan and I put it over like the joints, his hair initially, which is a little browner than the rest of them. A little bit on the stalks for the eyeballs, that kind of thing. All right. So I'm gonna work with some different colors of those, of the tan. He's gonna be kind of gooed up a bit too with some of the, um, the wave effect uh, as well. Uh, the clear wave effect scenic material to make him look kind of slimy. <laughs> and he'll have like an ooze trail leading from the, the table down to where he is on the floor, which isn't too far. So, okay. And of course, I'll paint his eyes looking kind of dead and his teeth and that sort of thing. And the eyes on the, the stalks as well. So, okay. <music> All right, so I did quite a bit more painting on the uh, spider head. Uh, I used all these colors and I showed them in uh, some previous stills. I, I haven't used these yet. These are some oils that I'm gonna use here in a moment. But for right now, um, I went over, um, I created a little mix of some clear red and some white to do the inside of his mouth, sorry. You don't want that to be like pure red, but it's a reddish looking color for his mouth. I just used some white over his teeth. I painted uh, white over his eyes initially. And then I went back in with um, a little bit of khaki and a little bit of a uh, flat brown just on the tops of his eyeballs, which is actually the bottom of his eyeballs. So that's upside down. <laughs> But his eyes are kind of rolling back into his head because obviously, you know, what's happened to him? Um, <laughs> I also used um, quite a bit of uh, Burnt Umber from Model Masters on the various tendrils or whatever those things are that are ripped off. And then I went over and dabbed some clear right over top of them because they're kind of bloody as well. Just kind of, sorry, made those stand out a little bit better. And then I used uh, the burn umber just straight on the eyeballs for the stalks, the thing's eyes. And I'm still gonna do some more things on both of the eyes, his eyes and the stalk's eyes <clears throat> with some clear, um, some clear Tamiya on there as well. Then on his hair, I thinned out 
the um, the khaki and the flat brown quite a bit and just put it on almost like a watercolor kind of effect and put that over his hair to give some different tones because he has like a sandy brown hair or light brown hair and I did that all over the, the hair part of it. Okay. All right. So definitely coming along, looking pretty good. I don't know if I had mentioned, but I went over the face. I airbrushed it with some sand, Model Master sand, to bring down that really... Stop trying to away from me, spider. I'm still... Sit down. To get rid of that... that um, the flat flesh, flat flesh is not realistic looking skin tone. <clears throat> it doesn't look realistic at all. It's too dark. So you got to lighten it up. So I lightened it up with some of that. And I'm still going to do some more as far as some weathering powders and some oils. So, All right, but definitely looking pretty creepy. Bring out a lot more detail on that creepy spider. So I will continue working on Mr. Norris' spider head. <laughs> Right, so we use some Abdelong 502 oils to really um, add some different coloring and dimensions to the to the spider head, especially his legs with the darker joints and a little bit of darkness around the tips and that sort of thing. And then also to do some uh, some coloring on his face to make it look a little more realistic in his hair as well. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. So I'm just gonna let those uh, oils set up and dry. I also uh, use some, some rust oils on the table to soften a lot of the powders that I had put on and make them look more realistic, like the real stains and rust on the metal table. All right, so I'm gonna let that go for now. I think that's looking pretty sweet. You can definitely appreciate how the face looks when you turn it upside down because it's, it's the right side. It's looking at it straight on, the terrified look on his face and his eyes are just all messed up. So that looks pretty sweet. <laughs> and I'm just putting him on the base here to kind of get an idea of how it all looks together. So it's pretty cool. All right. So I think I'm going to let that go for now. Uh, I won't be able to do anything more until I get everything, start putting all the elements onto the base. I still got quite a bit to do as far as the flamethrower effect and certainly painting McCready. Um, because once I put him down, I'm going to put on some goo, some of the wave effects, um, and that gooey look to him and also the parts coming down off of the neck onto the floor and like a trail to him and that sort of thing. So, and what I'm thinking of doing is I'll probably just use five minute epoxy to glue him down. Once I get ready to do that, put him in the place where he's going to be, you know, obviously the tips of his legs, and then I'll use the goo to kind of disguise that. So it looks like it's just a part of the the ooze and the slime coming off of them, so. All right. All right, so I got the base colors on McCready and I showed all the paints that I used on it. Now I'm gonna go back and look again. It's, it's really hard to get an idea of his jacket. It's kind of a, it's really worn of course and beat. I can't quite tell if it's a black leather jacket that's just all beat or it's kind of a brown leather. So I'm gonna look at it again and see, but it's, I'm definitely gonna be doing some more weathering and some powders on it to, to lighten it up. Uh, and then um, 
Initially, I have brown there for his, or khaki for his belt, but that, um, that belt underneath is the one that goes to those little metal clips on the back, which are for the, um, the tanks for the flamethrower. So those are a different color. I believe those are more of an olive green, but I want to make it different than the green on his pants. So I'm going to kind of look at that and figure out what color to make it. Uh, his boots, I use two different kinds of, well, I use the black brown and then some khaki to, to highlight it a bit. Well, the pants turned out rather glossy, but I am going to put more weathering and powders, but I used all flat colors, so I'm not sure why those are give, giving a glossy look to them. So, And then his hands I want to take a look at. Uh, I painted them with flesh initially, but if I look on the inside of this hand, it's really hard to get a shot on that. Come on. It looks like he's wearing a glove. So I'm going to look at the stills again. If he's wearing a glove, I may have to change that color a bit to be a glove, a glove tone. But all right. But these are the initial base colors. I'm obviously going to be doing a lot more detailing and, and weathering as well. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I got the painting done on McCready's head. Looking pretty good. So I used a couple of browns in his hair and in his beard. At first I went over and I used some flat white and I kind of dry brushed some of the snow on, but I wasn't crazy with it because <clears throat> it just kind of lightened up his dark hair. So I went over it again with some dark brown and then I used some of the snow effects that I used on the... the um, the nameplate and use a toothpick and I just dabbed it on and some of it's on in little chunks like for his beard because it is pretty crusty his frozen pieces of snow and ice on his face and hair but his hair was still dark it just had the obvious snow parts on it so I went ahead and used those pieces to do it so painted his lips and his teeth I did his eyes and eyebrows I wasn't Thrill was my first attempt at his, eye, his eyes. I did it a couple of times. I'm kind of satisfied with them now. I mean, I'm never really truly satisfied. Getting them to both be exact and look good together is really hard. And I'm not sure. I mean, it's a pretty good sculpt of his face, of Kurt Russell, but it's just slightly, slightly off. I don't know if it's a grimace on it. It looks more like him there, right, in that angle, but... But it looks pretty good. His eyes are blue, so I tried to get that color. All right. So the head's looking pretty good. I also um, did more on the body as far as doing some weathering powders. I painted that um, the lower belt green and the top one around his shoulders for the, for the flamethrower. I want it to be a different color than the brown there. I painted up the top of the gun holster in the gun and put that on him and glued it. Did some silver highlights, as you can see, like on his belt buckle, his snaps, things like that. And I painted the blue on his little shirt underneath, which is the color that it is. Okay. And I did a lot of dusting of white over, over all of it just to kind of give it a look like he's dusted in snow. I painted the laces on his boots. 
Did some weathering on those as well. All right, I painted his hands uh, after a flesh color. I went ahead with some of the light sand to lighten it up. I'll probably do a little bit of weathering on those as well. I still have to paint the flamethrower. All right, but looking pretty good, coming together slowly. The key to a lot of this is just layering, lots of layering, layering of colors, uh, layering of effects, like weathering powders or oils, that kind of thing, just to get the get the look that you want it to be. So I got out the, um, well, I have the, the main back tank and I got the other smaller tank and the couple of hoses that go onto it and I was kind of dry fitting them. So I have to start looking at the some screenshots and getting those painted and then the dynamite. As far as I can tell, the dynamite is not red. It's kind of a that brown paper look for dynamite. And I think these bands are black around it. But I'll take a look at that and figure out what I want to do with the dynamite as well. So, okay. One other thing I'm doing is a little bit of epoxy sculpt. <clears throat> I keep forgetting I have to patch up the his left shoulder there. That seam. The right one I did really good ahead of time with some uh, CA glue and some <clears throat> some of the set or the the Insta set on it. So that one I'm not worried about. But this one is a sizable gap. <clears throat> so I wanted to try the the method I saw on a channel with Augie Gonzalez recently, where you um, you put some epoxy sculpt in and then you use some of the paint that is on the figure to blend it in. I'm going to give that a try and then weather it and see how that turns out. So, all right. All right, so I'm working on painting the um, flamethrower tanks. So I want to do the salt and hairspray uh, technique on this as well. So I put down a coat of Tamiya aluminum over both of these and let it dry. And then um, I just took some salt in a little cup and I took the hairspray and sprayed it into a little plastic container and I just dabbed it on with a brush. I don't want to touch it, but you can see I just put a little bit of salt I tried to be a little more selective since these tanks would not have huge patches per se, but I do want some spots shining through that uh, that make it look kind of rough. I was looking at the, um, watched the film again last night and looked at some spots where they showed the tanks. They appear to be a really dark green, almost like an army green kind of thing. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Uh, I want, I'll probably have to mix something together because I don't think I have something as dark as I want it to be. And again, I don't want it I don't want it to match the pants and I don't want it to match the belts per se that are holding this on that are both also green. So I want something a little bit different and then plus it'll have the, the aluminum shining through as well and I'll, I'll really dirty them up with some oils also. And then I still have to paint some of the other things like these connectors and knobs and there'll be different metallics as well. So, all right, all right, there we go. So I took off the, um, salt and hairspray i use a toothbrush so it would be a little rougher you can see the aluminum underneath which is kind of cool i'm still going to weather this some more and grunge it up with some grease with some dirt looking stuff so that turned out pretty cool and here's this little tank here and this one i can't tell if this one goes like this here's the bottom over to that side that's the way i'm going to do it it can also go the other way but this kit didn't really come with instructions so i'm not worried about it i kind of like the other way because that way you can 
you can see this or since we're going to see his left side anyway is a better shot so okay all right so let me um let me take a look i want to do a little bit more painting on these little connectors and have to figure out actually i need to probably get start getting these connected on this just goes on to this little part that little opening and it goes on to the bottom and then i can put some metal on that as well so okay All right, and there is the uh, flamethrower tanks attached, well painted, the hoses put on and attached on to McCready. I still have to do some uh, some weathering, some oils on the tanks to make them look a little dirtier and more natural. But I figured it'd be easier to do it when it's on the figure, especially with all these hoses and everything. Um, so I showed the colors. I used some rubber black for the hoses and some aluminum and. Um, flat aluminum and um, the um, chrome silver. And it's used some five minute epoxy and also some CA glue to glue some of the parts on. All right, looking pretty sweet. One other thing that I'm working on uh, is this part right here. And the way it's supposed to go, they didn't give me any instructions. Everything was pretty well straightforward except for that one piece. Now. I figured it must rest into these two metal pieces that are grooved, come up, curve around, and come back down. And it's supposed to be holding up the bottom of the tanks. It's the support. So um, I figured I could get it jammed in there. It has to go through this hose and come back down because of that nozzle thing sticking out. But um, it just wasn't reaching right. right. So I decided to just go ahead and take some... Uh, this bendable aluminum that I got. It's made for jewelry. It's easy to bend and it cuts. And then I just cut off two pieces of um, some aluminum tubing and stuck it on the end. And it just goes right down inside of there. Let me show you how that's gonna look. All right, so I just have it kind of sitting in place. I have to glue it into place on there, but that's the idea. It's supposed to be the metal frame work that uh, gets attached onto those metal parts on the belt the green belt and it's it's the bottom support for the for the tanks and then obviously there are belts you can see right there that piece of green one there that go around him as well that hold it around his chest so all right and then plus it's real metal so that's kind of cool i don't even have to paint it i can just put some weathering oils on it as well to kind of make it look like it's dirty and natural so all right, one other thing I keep forgetting to do is paint those little bullets on his belt with some silver, so I'll get that done too. But he's just about complete. All right, there we go. So I have that glued in place. I think it's pretty cool because it's actual metal, so it, it definitely looks the part of the metal brace at the bottom. Like I said, I have to dirty it up. I don't want it to be quite so shiny, but it's definitely metal. All right. So I have some CA glue hardening on that. I'll let that harden overnight. Then I just have to do some weathering on the tanks with some oils, and I'll do the same on that metal rod. Um, maybe a little bit on the um, on the flamethrower gun. I'm not sure, though. It looks pretty... Well, we'll see. It looks kind of cool with the gun metal. But, but other than that, he's pretty much done. Looking really cool. And then that, that'll complete all three of the figures, the main parts of them. I'll do some extra tweaking and that sort of thing once I get them onto the base. So, all right. All right, and there is the finished McCready. I used uh, some of the Abtalung 502 oils to do a lot of weathering on the backs of the tanks. 
make them look more natural so there's not a stark difference between the uh, aluminum underneath and the dark green paint that's on top of it. I also did some of the weathering on that piece of metal there so it looks more of a natural blend for that as well. So that looks pretty cool. All right, so he's all completed. Looking pretty sweet. And we're gonna just start fighting the spider head. All right, so I 3D printed some really cool looking um, name plates, shaped like a block of ice, uh, made by my friend, uh, Mark Fraley. Uh, fantastic job as usual. He's made uh, three other nameplates for me, which are really, really quite awesome. He's really getting good at um, creating these different files. So um, I came up with the idea that I wanted the um, one point we see a scene where they um, they go to the Norwegian camp and they find that they dug out a block of ice and they had it in their in their camp and it was opened up. And obviously the idea is that the, the alien was in it and got loose. So I wanted this kind of an idea where it's just like the block shape and it's inset a bit and then put the thing logo inside of it. And I'm trying to think of some ideas of maybe lighting it up. So this one is hollow and this one is, I did solid just to kind of see. It's a big old hunk of resin. <laughs> For some reason, the, the solid one is a lot more cloudy looking than this one. This one looks whiter and more like ice and I want to put a gloss coat on it to make it look that way too. So I'll go with this one. Um, now what I'm trying to do, I tried a few tests. Um, I tried using some of this Bombay ink turquoise in this here. And it, it dyes it, but it's not really where I want it to be. Um, this is um, clear to me a blue which is a little darker, but it's still not quite what I want it to be. So what I'm thinking of doing, actually what I'm going to do, is I'm gonna do the method where I mix some five minute epoxy in with a little bit of the clear blue, and then I'll just kind of drizzle it down into these um, openings, because they're fairly deep. And just let that dry. Because then I'm gonna go over the whole thing with a clear, glossy and make it look more icy and add some effects and maybe some white for frost that kind of thing so all right so let me give that a shot and see what that see how that looks all right there we go so that looks pretty cool and because it is the clear blue it is translucent i'm not sure if i'm going to do anything with lighting on it just because it's kind of it's kind of hard with the whole thing being clear it would be pretty obvious so but i like that that stands out in there so i think if i just do some weathering and some clear effects on it and some gloss it'll it'll come out looking pretty clear um but i was able to get it down into those deep um openings pretty easily and um if a little bit was on the top it's fine it's thin enough that it's it doesn't look as deep of a blue as the as the words so that gives it a distinctive look and you can tell that it says the thing so okay <laughs> All right, so I decided to take a little bit of a, a diversion from what I was originally doing with the block standing up. and um, But I still have the block idea of the ice. So what I did was I cut it off at an angle, as you can see. So it's facing out this way. And um, well, first I, I cut off the bottom so it was all open, then I, then I cut off that angle. And then I cut out the bottom of this uh, styrene sheet and this is just like a towel pattern. Um, it just happens to be some thicker styrene that I happen to have in stock. And um, it's not gonna be this towel pattern. I'm gonna cover it with snow effects and I'm gonna trim it down to where I want it to be. Uh, and then what will happen is this will just slide right underneath the, um, 
the base. You can get that here. Okay. And this isn't the final shape of it either. I'm going to trim it down some more. That's why this is rounded and this is squared off. I'm, I'm going to wait until I put on the, um, the snow effects around it and ice effects. Then I'm going to trim it in an odd shape so it's not just a, you know, a rounded part or a square. And, um, and then it's going to match up. Sorry for the light. It's going to come up to the edge of that like I, like I have right there. And I may still adapt some of this to cut it off a little more flush. We'll see. I'm not fully done with that. I still haven't figured out what I want to do with this edge. So I might do something with that. And um, so I use 500 epoxy to epoxy this down. And the back of it, I didn't cut it quite as straight. So I just put a thin piece of uh, styrene tubing in there and glued that in place to seal it up just so the whole thing is nice and solid on there. And then I can, I can add some effects around it. So, okay. All right. So I definitely like that better. It's a little more low profile and it's going to stand up better in front of the display. And I'm still playing with some ideas of some lights. I do have some breathing uh, SMDs, some mega SMDs that I can put behind it that it'll just pulse on and off. So we'll see. But uh, again, it's all open in the bottom, so I can do whatever I want with that. And you can see how deep those letters are. That's, that's the actual letters on the inside because it's hollowed. And it's blue because obviously I stuck that blue epoxy inside of there for the, for the thing. So, all right. <laughs> All right, so work comes along really well on my thing nameplate. And so as I showed in the stills, I used uh, some Vallejo uh, snow effects around the bottom edge and molded that onto it as though it's, it's kind of buried in some snow and that's hardened overnight. Actually, it hardened a lot faster, but uh, I let it fully harden overnight. Then I went back and I used these um, wave water effects and it's just a thick gel that you can put on and you can see how it made that look more uneven and more like ice that's wet. It looks pretty cool, especially right there in the, in the middle of it. All right. And then as you can see, I cut down the styrene around the rough pattern of the snow that I made. So I'll keep it rough. I just kept that flat part in the back. It's going to slide underneath the base. All right. All right, there we go. So I dusted on some, some flat white. I'll show you that here in a moment. But I notched out underneath the front of the base to center this right in the front of it so that it slides underneath and the back of it fits in kind of snugly right there. And I still have to finish up this edge, so I'll make that match up when I'm ready to do that. But... Pull that out of there. All right, and it's just a bit of a lip, and I trimmed a little bit of that off as well on the right side so it would match up. But let me kind of show you this. So I want to keep it subtle. I still want to keep a lot of the shine, but you can see some of it's like the flatter white look on it. You can see there on the top, on the side. And I'll play with that some more. I also want to do a little bit of powders on it. But let me go ahead and um, and rig up the lighting and and show you what that looks like and, and see um, how I want to try to do some lighting on it as well. <laughs> Okay, there we go. And again, the camera tends to make it look a lot more intense than it is. It's actually a brighter blue glowing with the thing. And it does illuminate the rest of the ice 
block as well, which is kind of cool. Now, um, let me take that off there and I'll show you what that is. So I'm just using four mega uh, cool white SMDs that are all strung together in one, <clears throat> one strip. And I took this piece of uh, clear styrene and I just airbrushed some clear blue on it. So it'll give it a bluish tint. And that weird shape, I traced it around the, the shape right there. Um, now, I did figure out that I don't want it too close because then it becomes too much of a hot spot. That's why I have it kind of sitting down a little bit. So that, and I'm just sitting it on there, obviously. But I don't want it to be, and even on the camera, like you can make out more of a hot spot. So I definitely want to keep it further away from the, um, try to do this. There we go. Sort of like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And uh, these are breathing SMDs, by the way, so they just all breathe on and breathe off or fade on and fade off in unison, so. Okay, so I think that's the way I'm gonna go. I tried it with just some white, but um, it's it's really hard to get that darker blue to show up as blue, so I like it better. Because the logo for the thing in the beginning of the movie is blue. So I think that's gonna be kind of cool to light that up, so. All right. <laughs> All right, and there's the finalized uh, nameplate for the time being. Looking pretty cool. So what I ended up doing is I took some clear styrene rod that you can see right there. So you wouldn't be able to see it through the clear ice. And I five minute epoxied it onto that uh, sheet of styrene that I had painted clear blue. And then I glued it onto the inside there and it's it's nice and solid so it's a nice distance so it diffuses properly um, without any hot spots it just kind of gives a nice cool looking blues glow it also um, lights up just a little bit of the ice which is fine and it looks cool but you can't see anything else in there if I had put some solid supports you probably would have been able to make them out through the clear and I didn't want to do that so all right so looking pretty cool um, now what I started doing, and I'll continue working on it, is um, I cut out some more of that wood underneath here, and I haul it out some more of this for the battery to go back in. I'll probably dig out a little bit more, because I figured out the best way to do this is to just have all of this, shorten these wires, have the battery and all the apparatus right here behind it, and have enough space for it to slide right underneath. And then this will slide right up snug against this part here, and then... Um, you won't even notice it so that this whole thing can be removed and um, and just have its own power supply separate which it would anyway but I don't want to have to fuss with wires going back through the back and all that deal with it um, it'll just have its own power supply and button that I'll just click on and slide underneath so okay looking fantastic uh, really happy with that and um, that's all ready to go for when I get everything else all finished up on this display all right, so that's going to wrap up this part of the video uh, for this week. I will definitely be finishing up the rest of the build here soon, and it, it's not going to be too much longer that I will then complete the second uh, or the last part, the finale. Uh, and I have a lot of it filmed already. As I said, I, I um, was getting a really long video that would be well over an hour, and so I decided to split it up and, uh, and just end this part here. Uh, I also got a new T-shirt. Uh, for my thing craze that I'm into. And uh, it's a um, it's for the classic thing from another world. It's from the same company that I got the first one from. It's called Red Bubble. Really cool site. I'll try to get you a good shot of this. But it's really cool. It's an image of the thing coming through a door and you see like the images of the people there. 
and it even has like the movie titles down below so all right so that's pretty cool so now i have a shirt for both of the films um which i love both of them they're both really great so all right so thanks again to all my new subscribers uh, i will be definitely wrapping this up here very shortly and showing the finale of this uh of this incredible build so stay tuned and i will see you next time thanks a lot